Okay, now what I'm going to show everybody is the interesting way that the hard drives are actually mounted in between these rails. So normally, the way a hard drive would be mounted is there would be a piece of metal going across here like that, and the hard drive would come and screw into this piece of metal, and it would be held in like that. However, and I keep forgetting to take my watch back off after I take a quick break, there we go. Okay, so since there is no metal here, and it's all set up for superior airflow, the way they intend for you to uh, mount these guys is with bungee cords. And that may sound a little strange, but they've got these neat little brackets that screw on to the hard drive, like so, and then it clips in, and they're bungee. So, by the way, this is a 2 terabyte hard drive. Uh, this was also donated to me directly um, by NappyFS again. Um, he had purchased a bunch of hard drives for himself and realized he had no use for that much hard drive space. So he said, you know what, you can probably use this a lot better than I could, so why don't you take it? So, I did. Now, let's screw one of these little bungee deals into place. And I'll show you how it works, because it is actually, if I can get the screw lined up, it's actually pretty ingenious. I was impressed the first time I set up one of these cases. I was like, oh my god, it seems very unsafe, but it's actually quite smart. So let me try and get that lined up correctly. Drop another screw in there. that sucker in there like that. Now, this is firmly attached to the drive. So, what you do is you make sure you have the drive oriented correctly, is you hang the drive by hooking it into these things. Come on. And then the drive just kind of floats there in midair. Of course, when it's standing up, it's not going to be hitting the other side of the case like this is, but it would be suspended roughly right about there. And that makes for excellent anti-vibration. So your hard drives aren't going to make any noise by jumping around in there because they're just floating. So, that being said, let's go ahead and hook up a bunch of these drives real quick. There we go. That's all there is to it. And then you can just keep dropping in more drives. I'm going to put my largest capacity drives at the top just because I want to. And technically, I believe you can also remove these extra rails here and uh, add additional hard drives because you still have the bungee clip set up there as well. So. Let's pop these in. There's two. That is a five hundred. that, and then my little piddly 160 that I still have. I will eventually be replacing this with like a 500 or something. 
I don't have any vital stuff on it really. Oh! Helps if I bungee it in the right set. And I have an additional 2 terabyte hard drive that has been existing that I will install here in this set. But it is not available at the moment because it is currently hooked up to my wife's laptop so that I have some place to store this recorded footage. Okay, so we have all our hard drives mounted in there. They're all hanging out completely fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my PCI Express 1X capture card. And like I was referring to earlier, we are going to install that into this PCI Express 8X card slot. I've already re removed the back plate, so it should just bloop, drop right in. Use one of these screws to screw the sucker in there. Now, he is firmly seated. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get the video card in, shall we? Now, being that if you notice, the video card actually will take up three backplane slots. I have already emptied three slots here of their back face plates. And now, I will attempt to install it. However, I think that hard drive is going to get in my way. Let's... Hmm... Let's remove that hard drive real quick. Maybe I'll have to rearrange the way I have stuff set up here. This is primarily the reason why I try to dry fit everything in my cases prior to running cabling. As you run into stuff like this. Where if I had already cabled this guy in, I would have had to undo all that. Okay, so that's out. Let's try that again, shall we? Drop him in like so. There. Click. No issues whatsoever. Clearance, perfectly fine. I have plenty of free space underneath here for my power connectors for my video card. And I wonder if these thumb screws will work. Not that I anticipate having to move my video card. Alright. Come on. Look at that. Looks like a charm. However, I did have screws that would have worked, which I probably should use because I'm pretty sure these thumb screws are used elsewhere in the case. Probably for one of the doors. So let's do this, shall we? Now, unfortunately, I'm screwing in the side of the panel that is the easiest, but now I've got to finagle this screw hole to line up just right. There we go. The nice thing about these video cards is even though they're a little difficult to align the screw holes from time to time, the connector on the motherboard locks into place. So if you can squeeze this guy into lining up with a screw hole, the connector will not come undone. Well, very rarely will it come undone. I've had it pop out a couple of times. Not on this particular machine, but in the past. Alright. So the one screw hole that the physical card is actually screwing into is going to be the trickiest and the most important, of course. Now, there we go. Screw that in. Make sure it's still seated good. Well, whatever. 
and I had a third screw down there, and I don't know where it ran off to. Oh, there it is. Hello. Now we'll screw in that third one. Ta-da! And all three of those are screwed in, giving this firm, even though it's wiggly, giving it firm connections. Now you would think initially there are these SATA ports, I hope those show up on camera, down at the bottom of the motherboard. You would think initially that me having the video card over the top of those right now would be difficult. However, the back of this case is open, so I can literally flip the case over, reach over and plug them in underneath the card, and it will not be a serious issue at all. So, let's take this hard drive that I just removed and we'll install it right here. And then we'll worry about that other two terabyte drive at a later date. Probably remove either one of the CD-ROM style slots so that I can get it up there or I can put it directly on top of my solid state drive, however I don't know how much heat those things produce. So I'd like to give it some wiggle room for heat. Okay, there's that. So there's all four of my data drives installed, my solid state drive down here, my PCI Express capture card, and my video card installed. So all of the drives and all of the cards have been now installed. There's no more physical hardware that needs to go into the case. So now, what I need to work on is getting the data cables connected for the hard drives and the optical drive, and those both go into these SATA connectors down here. And then I'll work on the power connectors, which will go to both the motherboard, the video card, and again, all the drives. So, um, and then of course I have to route all of these fan connectors like these, get those routed and plugged in correctly. And then there is this grounding cable, which I should have connected with the power supply, but I will reconnect somewhere else. Really, with this small of a case, it's probably not that big of a deal. I think what I'll do is I'll ground it out over here, onto the metal portion of the case. I'll just go ahead and do that now. Undo this screw remount it, sorry, I'm doing this off camera a little bit, remount that screw through here and screw it back into this blue portion of the metal, like so. And then I'll pull the excess back through and then somehow I will wrap this up in here a little later, so that it's not in the way of anything, and that'll be that. So, I'm going to take a short break and empty the camera of its footage, and then I'll be back to do all the data cables and power cables, and then we should be done, pretty sure. <laughs>